I went out to a customer site this week to sort out an issue with a desktop PC for somebody. The desktop PC is a Dell Vostro 3681 like the one right here. And when I plugged it in to try and get access to the files on it, it tripped a breaker on the consumer unit. So I decided to take it off site and have a look at it where I wouldn't, you know, cause any harm to the business. Um, the power supply on this unit is a Dell H200EBS-00 and I'm going to take that out and see if we can have a look at it and see what's wrong with it. This is the power board from my power supply. I just want to have a quick disclaimer here to say that this is for demonstration purposes only. I'm not in any way suggesting that everybody should grab a multimeter and start attacking one of these power boards. There's very, very high voltages on these boards and you can cause harm to yourself. So please don't follow what I'm doing here. With that said, I am going to carry out the first task I normally do when I take out one of these boards, which is to discharge the main filter capacitor. So from the top of the board I was able to identify that my main filter capacitor was at this position right here and what we need to do is just to make sure that there's no residual voltage hanging around here that might cause me any harm while I'm doing my testing. So I put my multimeter into volts DC, I place my red probe right here and I place my black probe right here and I measure that there's zero volts at this point. So because there's no volts on this capacitor I can be sure that there's nothing dangerous, there's no residual voltage that you know will go through me to ground while I'm checking on this circuit. So let's progress to the next step. So on this board I can see my AC signal enters the board right here because we've got our live and our neutral right here. Now the input section to these switch mode power supplies, uh, the first circuit that it hits is an EMI RFI filtration circuit. So it's just a number of inline inductors and parallel capacitors just to filter out noise from entering the circuit and also to filter the noise from this board from possibly contaminating the mains. Now I know that this will end up at a bridge rectifier which will convert this AC to DC. So the start of this circuit is right here and I know it ends up at the four pins of a bridge rectifier. Now just from experience I can see there's four inline pins here which look like the sort of package that a bridge rectifier comes in. Above the board I can see that it looks like this so it is in fact our bridge rectifier right here. So the first thing I want to check is does our live make it to one of the pins of this bridge rectifier and does our neutral make it to the second pin and we're going to follow that right now. On this circuit board I'm going to trace the path of the live so let's start from here that goes across a fuse right here and following up here down to here now there's a number of inductors here and we're just going to follow the path across those to this section here and that then brings me to one of the pins of the bridge rectifier. Okay so that is our live. On the neutral side we're going to switch our colour to black and follow that section. So our neutral is right here. So across here, down here, down here, and then across a number of inductors to the second line. Okay, so that shows the path that our live wire takes through the EMI filtering, and this shows the path our neutral wire takes to the other pin of the bridge rectifier. So what we need to establish in this part of the circuit is basically just that there's continuity between live and here and continuity between neutral and here. I needed to take some measurements at this point just to see if the path of the live and neutral was making it to the bridge rectifier. This usually doesn't cause any problems but I just need to establish that. So with the power off and with my main filter capacitor discharged I placed my red probe to the live input uh, I put my multimeter into continuity mode and I place my black probe right here. Now I had no continuity at this point, but 
I understood that the fuse was probably blown so I took my test instead past the fuse the fuse is along this point here so I placed my probe here and there was continuity at this point so I have continuity from here down to the pin of the bridge rectifier on the neutral line I place my probe here and I place my red probe right here and sure enough there was continuity between these two points so aside from the fact that the fuse was blown which is you know a symptom of another fault I knew that the input section was working and that brings me up to the bridge rectifier which sits at this point right here so we need to just check and see if there is any issues after the EMI filtering so having established that the path through the EMI RFI filtering section is working we need to see if there's any issue on the other side of the bridge rectifier now I'm conscious here that the fuse has blown so there is a short somewhere otherwise you know if it was a different issue other than a short you know it the power supply might be power cycling or it might not just power on but the fact that it blew the fuse means that there's a short somewhere so what I want to test here is I switch my multimeter to diode mode I place my black probe to the minus of the bridge rectifier I place my red probe to the plus of the bridge rectifier and in diode mode it comes up with zero 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 so there is actually a short in this section that's not a short on the input section here that's a short on the section where our AC is converted to DC so it's this next circuit right here in the scenario where we have a short across the plus and the minus pin of the bridge rectifier there are a few components that are most likely to cause this fault so I started with the bridge rectifier itself and I pulled that out of the circuit but when I pulled that out of the circuit I was still seeing a short across these two pins right here so the next thing to look at was the main filter capacitor so when I looked at that that's the filter capacitor that is right here um, I pulled that out of circuit and just tested it as well and it was fine also so next I could see that there was a diode here in a TO220 package there was a MOSFET right here the three pins of it right here another MOSFET here and another MOSFET here that were connected to one heatsink and I said I would pull this off the board and get a look at this because the MOSFETs in these circuits are under a lot of pressure so they are likely to go bad as well because all of these components were connected to the one heatsink I decided I would just desolder the whole lot together so there was these joints right here and these ones over here as well so when I desolder them it looks like this so what you have is you have the one heatsink here you have one MOSFET here another MOSFET here, one on the other side and a diode so when I desoldered those I decided I would carry out the same check here so in diode mode place my probe here and my probe here and what I found was I was then measuring non-zero so it was something like 0 0.6 or something like that but basically what it meant was that when I removed the heatsink with those four components the short also disappeared so it was then to go back to the four components and see which one of them was shorted so with my heatsink and my four components here removed our short seems to be gone so let's see if we could find the culprit was my next <laughs> my next thought on this so I place my red probe to this pin in diode mode and my black probe to this pin and what I found here was that this MOSFET right here the 60SL280D was completely shorted I placed my black probe to here and it was shorted and just the whole component was like a wire I flipped it over this component right here checked OK so I flipped over and I did the same check on this component right here in diode mode and sure enough this component right here also failed short 
uh, this component here was actually fine as well. So what I did was to replace the two components. The component here was a BYV10X, which was a diode, and the other component I needed to replace was 60SL280D. Now I couldn't buy this on AliExpress, I actually had to get it from another similar power supply. But I replaced the two of those, and when I replaced the two of those and refitted it into the board, that's what resolved the issue for me. I hope you've enjoyed following me along on this. It's actually very difficult to try and work out how to do the graphics on this. But I'd appreciate any comments you have on it. Um, it's particularly difficult when you have components that are on one side of the board and then you're trying to trace it on the back side of the board. But look, this is a work in progress. And any comments that you have, what I'm doing wrong, what I'm doing right, post them all down below and we'll see if I can improve this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.